Hello and welcome to the third lecture of the last and sixth module uh, in the online course Design Thinking for Engineers. Um, in this we will have a couple of videos, two to three videos regarding product uh, testing. So let's check out the first video of uh, testing. So now we're at the testing stage. How do you know if your idea is going to work? You simply bring your prototypes to your end users and let them give you feedback. Take the feedback and improve your prototype. So what do you guys think? It's not bad. Right, but have you thought about trying it in red? That might work. <coughs> Come on guys, we got work to do. Come on, guys. Now, what do you think? We love it. That's great thing about the design thinking process. Whenever we get feedback, we simply take the prototype and tweak it. It. That, that is all. Those are all the stages of the design thinking process. We hope you learned something today. If you're ever interested and inspired to experience this place yourself, come on down to the Florida Hospital Innovation Lab or check us out on social media. Oh, <laughs> unpause. We never pause. So that was a kind of testing. அதாவது எப்படி வந்து டேரெக்டாக கன்சியூமர்ஸ் கிட்ட கேட்டு அவங்களோட ரிவ்யூ வாங்குறாங்கிற மாதிரி நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் கோயிண்ட் பி அ டூல் தட் திஸ் இஸ் யூனிவர்சிட்டி இன் சிட்னி யூனிவர்சிட்டி ஆஃப் நியூ சவுத் வேல்ஸ் ஸோ செக் திஸ் அவுட் Two years ago, I created a video about a project where second grade students took on the role of IDEO toy lab inventors to design and build a toy for their kindergarten schoolmates. They were given the following driving question, how will you as toy lab inventors design a toy for kindergarten students? IDEO Toy Lab is a division of IDEO that designs toys and mobile apps inspired by kids' curiosity, imagination, and desire to play and learn. You can find the link to the video in the description below. In this video, I want to show you an awesome observational and feedback tool from the D-School that our second grade students use during the testing phase. It is called the Feedback Capture Grid. And it allows students to capture their observational findings and user feedback during their testing session. After creating their first toy prototypes, the second graders visited the kindergarten class during their free choice period, a time when the kindergartners get to choose different stations that contain activities related to the content they are learning in class. The kinders got to play with the toys, while the toy inventors got to see if whether or not their toys were enjoyable and easy to play with, and also find insights that could help them improve their toys. The second graders used their feedback capture grid to document their new learnings and feedback during the testing session. The feedback capture grid contains four quadrants. In the first quadrant, the second graders wrote down their users' feedback on what they liked about their toy prototype. The second quadrant contained the user's constructive feedback, while the third quadrant contained the questions that arose during the testing. The fourth quadrant contained new ideas or improvements that emerged from the tests and the information they were looking to record. Using what they compiled in their feedback capture grid, they proceeded back to the prototype phase to refine and improve their toy prototypes. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about how I use design thinking with my students, please check out my book, Design Thinking in the Classroom. The link to the book is in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit... So, we, look at, we took a look at uh, how uh, primary class students are uh, designing products for kindergarten students, right? So, this is a really good video, and uh, 
uh, we have come to the uh, last video of uh, testing in, and prototyping i guess this is the one that was done by UNFW so you've got an idea and you want to see what people think of it you need to make a prototype because you need to test that idea and see if it's actually a good idea or if you need to go back to the drawing board so to make a physical prototype you need to start with a sketch you need to take that idea from your head down into pencil and paper. Doesn't matter if you can't draw, I can't personally, but you need to get that idea out and onto something tangible. Then you're ready to start making a 3D model to make your physical prototype. So if you can't 3D model, that's actually not really a problem these days. You can find someone who can team up with them and get a basic model out. But don't spend too long on it because you need to get to the next stage fast and that is making the actual prototype. So you can take a 3D model and convert it into a file for 3D printing very easily leave it overnight and come back to an actual 3D print which you can then test. And this is the most important part. You need to test it quickly and thoroughly and then go back and iterate on your design and repeat this process till you're happy with it. But if you get further down the process and find out you need to change something, it's a lot more difficult. So don't be afraid of failure early on. You want to test things as much as possible and then iterate on that idea till you're happy with it. I'm an industrial designer and as an industrial designer, we're very interested in testing prototypes for a number of different reasons. Uh, and I've got some examples here of, of how we've run through a project. This is a pair of glasses we designed, and the first prototype is a low-quality FDM print, which is form deposition modelling. And we've done this to check the physical appearance and the scale of the uh, design. Once we're happy with that, we'll move to an uh, SLS. So this is a select laser sintering, it's made of a nylon, and in this instance, people are actually wearing the glasses, so we're interested in how they flex and feel and how the lenses snap in and out. So it's more expensive, but a higher quality. We then want to check some of the mechanical function. So in this instance, we've gone to a SLA, a resin process with SLS hinges, and we're checking the uh, tolerancing between the parts and to make sure that the mechanical function's right. And we've then moved to a, a low quality prototype tool where we've injected actual polymers into the mold to check how the material affects the design. And finally, these are the final production glasses, which is again injection molded, but in a high quality production tool and brings all the elements of the design together. Uh, really, when you're testing a prototype, you really want to test it to failure. You want to know where your design or idea doesn't work and not where it works. And often I'll see people test a prototype and say, isn't it great, it does all these things, but they're ignoring an inherent flaw which will bring you undone if you don't expose it early. In the boating scenario, that's making a boat and testing until it fails, working out you know, how many people can you put in it before it capsizes, trying to... Uh, drop test and break them. So for us, we uh, we build these things, which are you know, smart helmets. We destroyed heaps of them. These are made um, 3D printing and CNC milling, and we just got them out there, test the user interfaces, and destroyed them. Often, we miss the user experience of our products. And a great way to get that out there is just to give your product as a prototype to lots of just regular people. They'll give you honest feedback, whether it all makes sense or not. Often, when you're beginning your idea, you want to put all the greatest functions into it. But it's really about time and getting to market fast. What you need to do is draw all the functions and features that you have in your product, put red lines through the ones that don't have to be there in the first one, and make it finished, not perfect. There's a first time for everything and we're still testing this series. If you could leave some comments and suggestions, it would be really helpful for us to improve the program. So that was a short video on prototyping and testing. So we have come to the end of this lecture and the next lecture we'll be uh, having a few pitching sessions on how to, uh, we'll have a few videos on how to have a good pitching session as well as how to good, uh, take a good uh, market survey or market research survey. So that's the end of this lecture and also in the next lecture we'll be having a short uh, uh, note on the assignment on how to do it and uh, thank you guys.